In Akira Toriyama's original ending to Dragon Ball Z, we were left with the open idea of Goku taking off with Oob to train the next great hero of Earth. While this was meant to let us draw our own conclusions, what if this was instead merely another one of the many time skips we're used to? And what if he did this with the events of Dragon Ball Super in mind? Shout out to Rain, Ian, and Propole for finding the stone in the last video. Be the first to find wherever Master Roshi hit it today, and timestamp it in the comments if you want a shout out next time. Dragon Ball V was created by Blackbird Studios. Show them your support on their various social medias. Also remember to dynamite kick the like and subscribe buttons because latent energy isn't very effective in martial arts. Age 785, or about a year after the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament in the original series. Goku and Oob leave to train together. Our hero promises to take good care of the boy, while he himself promises he'll be back soon. Presumably, they're currently in Oob's village. Again, we see them departing, this time joined by Pan. The three arrive on Kami's lookout. Oob shouting, this place looks awesome. The child's master comments. This is where he learned a few of his most important lessons, to which the pupil guesses they've come here for some special training. Goku confirms this. While a student has been making great progress the last year, Goku notes that he's been struggling holding back against his mentor. Luckily, he has a plan. It involves fighting an opponent who wasn't afraid of killing, which leaves one option. Oob will fight the being he used to be. Oob is noticeably more confused than appreciative, at least at first. The Saiyan introduces an area within the lookout known as the Time Room. He explains that it lets you go back in time, and it feels pretty realistic despite being only an illusion. This room was first introduced during a filler episode of the Piccolo Jr. Saga, where Goku ventured back to visit a young Master Roshi when he was a student under Master Mutaito. It was also briefly featured in the Saiyan Saga with Krillin and the others training. Continuing, Goku notes that Oob's latent power spikes when he's mad, which makes sense due to his previous self being a pretty angry guy. Pan and Oob will get a quick lesson from Mr. Popo before Oob is introduced to his last incarnation, Majin Buu. Popo asks the two kids if they're ready, and their training commences, learning to be as steadfast as a stone and quicker than lightning. The young warriors exhibit tons of promise, finishing the majority of Popo's trials fairly quickly, much faster than when Goku was around their age. While the children catch a breath, Mr. Popo explains that for their final portion of training, he will need a hair from each of them. Plucking one off Oob, Pan complains to her grandpa that she's too tired and doesn't want him touching her hair, to which Goku lets her sit this one out. While the genie works his magic, our hero asks if he can make him a copy as well. Though, Popo expresses a bit of concern. At the Saiyan's current level of power, it seems a bit dangerous. With a little bit of begging, Goku's old master caves. Chuckling, he comments on how he never changes. He'll let the Saiyan fight as well, but his training may take a bit longer to prepare. In front of the Earthling stands a seemingly perfect duplicate of him, wearing that creepy mask that sort of looks like one of the enemies from Super Mario Bros. 2. Mr. Popo explains if a clean hit has landed on this doll, it will cease to exist and Oob's training will be completed. With his goal set before him, Goku's student readies himself as the doppelganger does the same. Charging and bellowing a powerful war cry, Oob is promptly socked in the face by his doll counterpart. The creator of the face war explains that it will fight on instinct alone, using only the most deadly and efficient techniques automatically. Rhythm gathered. Oob takes the fight back to the doll on a more even ground this time, growling in anger. His master comments that this is a bit of his latent power breaking through. Even though he's fueled with resolve, the student is casually dealt with by his adversary, smashing his head into the ground. Mr. Popo laments how quickly the child forgot his lessons. Even Goku expresses a little concern, reminding the kid of the training he just went through to be steadfast as a stone and as quick as lightning and calming his heart and mind. He must clear his thoughts and control his emotions to master his power. Closing his eyes, Oob says he'll give it a try. With the reverse situation from before happening, the doll charges towards his unmoving opponent as it's about to go for another punch. Oob looks up with incredible determination in his eyes, something definitely having changed. Is this perhaps Ultra Instinct beginning to manifest? Dodging the punch with ease. The incredible warrior ends the battle landing a single kick, knocking the doll's head off. As it bounces across the lookout, the body begins to dematerialize. Even his masters are shocked at what just happened before their eyes. 
the caretaker of the lookout guesses Oop's successful controlling of his emotions, and the power that comes from them had an unexpected side effect, tapping into more strength than ever before. Meanwhile, Pan plays with a kitty. Goku congratulates his pupil, believing him to be ready for the time room. The genie agrees, although still taken aback by Oob's power-up. As the three of them re-entered the room adorned by countless different clock designs, the young Earthling can't help but sweat in anticipation of what comes next. His master restates his confidence, believing he can do this, reminding him to keep his mind clear and to control his emotions. Oob will become stronger than he ever could have been. As Mr. Popo fiddles with the clock to activate the room, a portal appears. The trainee leaps into it as his master's watch in confidence. Falling through the clock filled void, it doesn't seem like Oob is able to maintain that level of composure from earlier. Falling out of the strange realm, the child finds himself in a particular scene. But one that we should all recognize the world of the Kais. As Oob's previous self holds back the spirit bomb, he happens to take notice of the new person entering the battlefield. As Goku goes to finish the standoff, he beckons. You fought hard, all by yourself. I hope you get reincarnated into a good guy so I can fight you one on one someday. I'll be training and waiting. As Goku makes his last farewells to Kid Buu, he's interrupted by his future pupil falling directly into him. The sudden blow to the head is enough to break his concentration holding down the spirit bomb, allowing for the Majin to throw it into the sky. Vegeta is bewildered by this event, and it seems even Buu is speechless for once. Shouting, the Super Saiyan asks what that attack out of nowhere was about, to which the child profusely apologizes. However, the yellow-haired fighter cannot but comment that the kid seems a bit familiar. Acting as a reality check, Goku's opponent lets out a screech as he knocks the warrior through a faraway mountain. Transforming into a Super Saiyan 3, Goku emerges from the rubble. Even though his energy had just been renewed by Purunga, it appears as if he's losing confidence in himself already. He grimaces at the fact that Boo seems to still be growing stronger. The Saiyan vs Majin battle continues, as prior to Oob's interjection, notably with the latter fighter in the lead. Once more, he's able to knock our hero down. Will Oob really stand a chance against his past self in his prime? Back at the lookout. The present iteration of Goku prepares for a battle as his past counterpart fights, standing in front of the doll mimicking him. Impressed, he applauds Popo's efforts. <laughs> Saiyan lets rip a Kamehameha to test the waters of his new opponent. The beam looks to face through the doll, although he isn't too bothered. Goku even appears to be excited. He comments that at the end of this fight, he may not even need Ultra Instincts. Revealing his plan, Goku will try to perfect his form without any supplemental transformations. However, the genie doesn't seem to share the Saiyan's enthusiasm, hoping the warrior's request for a murderous version of himself won't be something he'll come to regret. Their battle beginning, Goku attempts to flank the doll but is immediately knocked off the lookout. Stopping himself, the fighter begins to echo some of Mr. Popo's sentimentality, believing that thing to be pretty scary. It doesn't respond, merely turning its head to stare blankly at our hero. On the sidelines, Pan wonders aloud if her grandpa can really lose to that thing. So the attendant explains her grandfather's mindset and the dangers of it. He wanted an opponent who wouldn't hold back against him, in contrast to the Saiyan himself, who restrains himself fearing he will needlessly hurt his opponents, as opposed to being genuinely scared of them. Once more, there is no comment from the doll Goku. Attempting another rush, the two fighters lock themselves in a brawl with the same outcome as before. Delivering a devastating neck chop, Goku goes down in a single attack, struggling to his knees. He's surprised that he already needs to take a sensu bean. Even in the past, Goku doesn't seem to be able to catch a break against his opponent, rendered helpless versus Kid Buu once more. The sadistic Majin laughs at the strangulation of the Saiyan. Brutality against his master becomes too much for him. Oob once more loses his cool in a fight, growling for the Majin to leave his master alone. The Earthling's eyes turn a dark color, quite similar to his past self. Interrupting the battle, he forcibly tags in with a devastating left hook. Remaining on the sidelines, Vegeta can only gawk at the kid's power, wondering who the heck he is and where he came from. 
Growing furious at the child's sucker punch. Who lets out another anger-filled scream? His opponent leaves the fatigued Saiyan with the prince, promising the demon that he will pay. The two charge at each other, beginning the battle. The past and future bodies of Majin Buu remain relatively equal in their clash, despite Goku's questioning if Buu is still getting stronger. He can't help but praise the kid as amazing too, though being called master by him was a bit strange. Trying to get a leg up in their bout, Kid Buu smashes his fist into Oob's jaw, believing it to be a decisive blow with a smirk. The Earthling's deadpan glare squashes this hope, and the demon growls in confusion. With a furious headbutt, his head is knocked into the dirt. As each of the combatants get angrier, they appear to grow in power, as noted by Vegeta. Goku notices the child seems to be copying Buu and learning from him, as evident with that savage headbutt. The beatdown fighter calls this new warrior awesome. While he does seem comfortable with these new moves, his inexperience shows. His heart still isn't in it. He's afraid to take Majin Buu out, the latter of which echoes Goku himself. The tides of the battle seems to be shifting to one side's favor, as Zub is beginning to show signs of exhaustion. In an attempt to get even with his foe, Buu smashes his opponent's head into the ground. Shouting to the young fighter, Goku acknowledges the innocence in him and knows how he feels. Oob wants to see the positive in everyone and improve everyone and everything. An opponent who's a good sport is much better than the guy they're dealing with. Knowing this firsthand, Goku gave the little bit of good there was a chance. And now they have the aid of Mr. Buu. He tells his future student to free his heart and mind and to not think too much about it. Balance was good for himself and his opponent with the danger of the fight, and he will be fine. His guilt and anger will be under control. The Elder Warrior notes if he had the power, he would want to save even this Boo, but he doesn't have it. And this little guy is pure evil, so he needs to end this. Another life is his only hope. They gave him a chance, and that's all you can do. With a final assurance of confidence, the past version of Goku lets Oob know that he believes in him, stating, you can do it, kid. Staring into the eyes of chaos and with his master's backing, he snaps back into reality, his entire body shaking. He acknowledges that his teacher believes in him, even when he was an unchangeable monster. Even when there was just the slightest chance, Goku thought he could be a better person. Realizing what he has to do, the young fighter recognizes that he has to cast aside his innermost anger, and thus the monster he once was. As Mr. Boo looks on from the sidelines, he can barely make out a change in the brightness to the young Earthling's hair. Back in present day, the two Gokus continue to be locked in combat, trying to get an edge in a back and forth exchange of attacks. The original throws a right hook at the fake, which the latter manages to dodge at the very last second. Having flown high into the sky, the doll's aura suddenly explodes all around him. Pan notices the different feel of the aura, asking Mr. Popo if the doll Goku just transformed, to which the other spectator confirms. It's a perfect copy of Goku due to being created from his own DNA, the Master of Magic explains. Instead of abusing its nature as a duplicate of the Saiyan, it transforms and adapts and grows stronger to even out the playing field. However, it seems as if this transformation has done anything but. The Super Saiyan doll begins pummeling our hero at an increasing rate. So much so that Goku's granddaughter starts to tear up, thinking she's about to witness the death of her hero. With a sudden kick, Vegeta barges into the sparring match, saving his rival. As he scowls back at his longtime frenemy, he wonders aloud what kind of mess Kakarot has gotten himself into this time. Goku greets the blue clad warrior, complimenting how he handled the doll like it was nothing. Ever the cocky fighter, the prince charges in showcasing Evolve Super Saiyan Blue, fully believing in his ability to decimate the doll. If it's a copy of him, like Popo said, the Saiyan of royalty believes he can handle it just fine, sneering he'd do himself a favor and eat one of those senzu beans. His nose actively bleeding, the prince is stunned at the difference between it and the low-class warrior he's known for decades. It doesn't battle like Kakarot at all. It fights with the intent to kill. Even worse, it's now using the power of a Super Saiyan God. With a single kick, the doll dishes out some revenge to Vegeta and knocks him onto the other side of the lookout. Even amidst the chaos, the Saiyan can help but revel at the chance to fight his rival without his biggest weakness. While this thought gets his blood pumping, 
Pan takes the chance to give a sensu to her grandpa. Growing even more in power, the doll begins to rush down on its new opponent. Starting to come to terms with reality, Vegeta begins to recognize this is a pretty sticky situation. The copy Goku's ruthlessness might prove too much for the Saiyan Prince. Right in the nick of time, a fully healed, fully confident Goku calls out to his doppelganger. He's supposed to be the one fighting the doll, not Vegeta. As the base form Saiyan charges towards him, the masked fighter's focus immediately changes. Resuming their initial bout, Vegeta finally understands his rival's objectives in this exercise. Goku is now adapting to his own power, seeing it as the way to perfect his ability without transforming. Continuing to have an edge in their brawl, the doll manages to hit the Saiyan with a devastating uppercut, taking the battle to the further reaches of the atmosphere. Able to stop himself, the warrior takes notice of the doll. Something seems different. Did it just enter? Ultra instincts? Back on Earth, Popo explains the doll has always reacted on instinct alone, and that his old pupil has so much as surpassed it. However, even with a power gap, Ultra Instinct can provide the necessary tools to balance the odds, believing this to be Goku's final test. The sparring match begins to reach its endgame, as he's continued to be beaten down. The Saiyan manages to sneak in a Senzu before a powerful attack sends him plummeting back to the planet below. Picking himself up, he curses the fact that was his last Senzu. No more get a Zenkai boost for free cards. Looking up into the sky, a glowing mass starts to form, revealing the doll to be charging up a Kamehameha. As this clone begins to prepare an earth-shattering blast, Goku knows if that manages to touch the ground, everything will be gone. This battle eclipsing all the other fighters present, the spectators are forced to merely trust in their friend and family to take up the mantle of savior once more. Instead of starting to charge a counterattack, the Saiyan merely closes his eyes. Back in the room of time, a radiant glow begins to emit from Oob. Opening his eyes, both the soul and fist gleam bearing a newfound power, Ultra Instinct. Even Kid Buu, with his limited capacity for thought, seems to understand this is bad for him. A futile onslaught of punches thrown at him, Oob easily dodges his evil counterpart. Bearing the outside world, the Majin begins to charge a devastating blast. Just like his master, Oob doesn't seem to plan for a counterattack, standing as still as a stone. Suddenly, Oob appears behind the demon. In a showing of their connection, Goku moves in the same way, teleporting behind his counterpart. It all spins around and fires the attack, but it's useless. Baby's creation performs the same action, attaining the same result. With a single, Ultra Instinct-infused fist, the Earthling punches a hole in the Majin's chest. Echoing his student's final attack, Goku plows his fist through the doll as well, ending their battles simultaneously. With Oob's trial complete, the world begins to disappear around him as he falls. Dropping out of the Black Void once more, the child emerges above the lookout, his master seeing the portal open in the sky. His arm is grabbed by his mentor, carefully brought down to the floor below. His master ends up using all his remaining energy. Dropping the kid, and exhausted, the elder warrior collapses next to the young fighter. Hand runs over to her grandpa in gleeful tears, breaking the silence. Holding him close, she was terrified he might die. Reassuring the little one, Goku promises he had everything under control. Regardless if that's true or not, he swears she'll always be safe with him. Pan points out the very real possibility that the Earth could have been destroyed, to which her grandfather explains his mentality. If the doll had been a legitimate bad guy who was that strong, sure, they would have been in real trouble. However, no matter how many times Goku almost dies, it's necessary so he can be the strongest he can to protect everyone and everything. As long as he's around, the Earth will be safe. Once he isn't, he'll at least have made sure Oob is strong enough to do the same. While his granddaughter bandages up Oob's head, the Saiyan apologizes for using up all the Senzu. However, Popo would beg to differ. Annoyed, the recovering fighter questions if he really had a spare bean the whole time, to which the genie asks if he can really blame him. Knowing himself and how things tend to go around here, Goku admits he can't fault Mr. Popo for hiding the last Senzu. Vegeta grabs his rival's attention, explaining that he actually came here for a reason. 
Knowing how his mind works, Goku guesses the prince wants a rematch, which Vegeta shoots down the idea. That's not it at all. The God of Destruction of Universe 6, Lord Champa, had apparently visited the prince. The deity came to warn that the Universe 6 Saiyan race is in danger, and that contacting him was the God's way of repaying him for saving Kappa in the Tournament of Power. Continuing, all the shorter warrior asks that his ally stays out of this. Questioning if he's sure, Goku admits the situation sounds a bit dire. Confirming he's certain, the proud warrior responds by saying he has to do this alone. He's tired of him always saving the day, and wants to be independent of his meddling, as he calls it. Conceding, the lighthearted Saiyan makes him aware that if he's needed, he's always around. Turning to his pupil, Goku makes it known he thinks Zub is now ready for the hyperbolic time chamber. Before that, though, he asks if they can get something to eat first. Never one to turn down a meal, the gluttonous Saiyan agrees wholeheartedly. And so, Son Goku managed to push Ub to heights far beyond of what Majin Buu could ever achieve, past his own power as well. As the pair relax, Universe 6's planet Sadala is greeted by the quiet but resolute Prince Vegeta. Staring down at the strange though familiar planet, he can't help but wonder. What could be so important that another universe's god would contact him for help? Standing alone silently in the hexahedron, Vegeta is at last going to see what his homeworld could have been.